Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I hope everybody is doing well out there today. Um, today we're going to take a bit of a deviation from uh, the videos that we would normally do on this channel. Uh, normally, of course, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, most of the time, I release a tutorial video on how to set up a home server application or, or a new device or something. We do a lot of tutorials on this channel and have for the past six months or so. Um, Today we're going to take a bit of a deviation from that. We're going to revisit a couple of videos that I've made uh, over the course of the past few months. Uh, in March, I released a video on uh, Nextcloud and uh, getting it set up and that sort of thing, and all of the little tedious details that went into setting up Nextcloud. And, and of course, there were several. Nextcloud is fairly tedious to set up on Docker and get up and running very, very uh, smoothly. Then, of course, in May, I released a video on FileCloud, and uh, it was super easy to set up. Uh, the, the install process was much easier, uh, much more straightforward, not a lot of manipulation, didn't have to change anything. Very straightforward uh, setup process. Uh, and I really, really appreciated that about FileCloud. In fact, uh, up until the last few weeks, I've been using FileCloud pretty much exclusively um, <clears throat> on my home server for, for file management, backup and file shares, all of that kind of stuff. But over the course of the last couple of weeks, there have been some things about FileCloud that have bothered me. Um, and that's what this video is about. So at this point, if you're still interested in hearing my opinion about FileCloud, uh, go grab your uh, favorite coffee cup. Uh, these come in different colors. Uh, link in the description if you want to pick one up. Uh, discount code DBTech for 10% off your order as well. So uh, that out of the way, uh, here are the things about FileCloud that made me stop using them and actually uh, email them to make sure that they wouldn't bill me again. First things first, uh, the reason we're all doing all of this, whether it's FileCloud or NextCloud or Plex, or, or whatever applications you've got hosted on your server is because you want to host things yourself. You want to be in control of your data. You want to make sure that, uh, you know, Big Brother or whoever out there uh, isn't in charge of your stuff. Um, and initially, FileCloud seems like a good solution for that. Again, it's easy to set up um, and, and it's got a great interface. But for 10 bucks a month, you get five users. So maybe for the average family or the average user, that's fine. You got a you know, husband, wife, kids, whatever, probably five is going to be enough. Um, but um, there, there are some other problems with that. Uh, you're paying them 10 bucks a month or 10 bucks a year to have access to the license for their software. But beyond that, the resources are on my computer. Uh, it's my hardware, it's my bandwidth, it's it's my time uh, doing everything. So to restrict me to five users is a bit frustrating, uh, especially when services like Nextcloud have no restrictions on the number of users you can have, and uh, they don't charge you for any of it. Now again, I agree, Nextcloud is more tedious to set up, but uh, you've also got a lot more flexibility, and that's kind of what I want to talk about next. And that's that there's no customization options for FileCloud. You can't change the theme, you can't change the logo, you can't change the TOS, you can't change the terms of or like the terms of service, uh, your your terms and conditions. You can't change anything about FileCloud unless you want to pay for the standard edition license, uh, which doesn't seem so bad. It's four dollars and twenty cents a month per user. Uh, the problem with that is that it's uh, billed a year in advance with a minimum of 20 users. Uh, so that ends up being about $1,000 a year uh, just so you can add more users and customize the aesthetic um, and the terms and conditions, those sorts of things on your own server, on the, on the software that you're hosting for yourself. Um, so... So knowing that it's going to cost you $1,000 a month to unlock a couple of tabs... And here's what gets me, like the ability to customize everything, uh, you know, the colors, the look, the feel, the, the theme, the whatever, it's all there in FileCloud. But when you go to those tabs and you start clicking around, everything is grayed out with a little banner across the top that says upgrade to the standard edition in order to unlock these features or whatever. Um, so to pay $1,000 a year to uh, manipulate the software that's on your server, I think is a bit ridiculous. Um, they, they apparently don't know who their target demo is, or maybe, maybe I don't know who their target demo is. Uh, apparently it's not, uh, it's not the family. It's not the, the, the guy with the roommates. It's not, uh, it's not a small home unit. Um, it is going to be small to medium sized businesses, but even then, let's say you've got a team of five, um, or let's say you've got a team of 10. 
you're still going to have to pay for a 10 additional licenses that you may never use in order to get the functionality and the, 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 the things that you need out of their software. Um, Nextcloud uh, makes it very, very easy to go in and add themes, uh, whether you can download them from their app store, you can find them online, you can create your own. Uh, theming and, and modifying things in Nextcloud is very, very simple. It's very straightforward. It's right there and it's easy to access and it's easy to change. Um, and, and I'm gonna keep mentioning this, Nextcloud is free. They don't have licensing. They don't have all of the restrictions that FileCloud does. One of the other issues that I have is that even as a Community Edition member, uh, where you have paid them money, granted not a lot, but some, is that um, as a Community Edition member, you're not allowed to submit a support ticket via email. Your only support options are to go through their forums. There may be other forums out there, but you can go to their forum and, and start a thread and then um, somebody will answer it during normal business hours, Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, and I found that out um, uh, a few weeks ago. I sent an email because I had a question um, and I waited 24 hours and I got an email back from a woman there uh, that handles their support saying, uh, hey, uh, because you're just a community edition member, uh, you have to use the forums to get support. I was like, cool, I just wasted 24 hours of my time. Fine, whatever. I'll go over to the forum and I'll submit uh, a, a thread there. So I did that. Um, and then when, when I got a response, it was from the same person who had just emailed me saying I couldn't submit a, an email. So instead of just answering my question quickly and saying, hey, in the future, uh, don't do this, uh, she added a lot of extra steps that were unnecessary, were time consuming and, and, and just frustrating. Um, they could have done an autoresponder uh, saying, hey, uh, if you're a community edition member, uh, go to the forums. Uh, otherwise, we'll get back in touch with you. There, there's something they could do to fix that, um, but they haven't done that yet. Um, so, so knowing that uh, apparently they have one person who handles all of their support, whether it's via email or in the forums or whatever, and that those things only happen Monday through Friday, nine to five during normal business hours, uh, of course, probably excluding bank holidays and whatever, uh, your options for support are very, very limited when it comes to uh, file cloud. And that's really disappointing since they require you to pay to get a license, even to host the software on your own resources. So one of the issues that I had uh, after getting everything all set up is that my phone wouldn't connect or it would sporadically, intermittently, uh, periodically it would say, can't find the server, uh, even though it was just connected to the server. Um, it, um, there, there's a lot of little issues like that that are frustrating. I had to go through multiple steps in order to get my phone to connect, and then it was sporadic. Uh, sometimes it would connect, sometimes it wouldn't. Uh, sometimes it would just throw up an error saying, can't connect to the server, uh, with no reason why. Um, also, before I could even do that, when I first tried to connect my phone, my phone threw up an error message saying that your server isn't configured to allow for device backups. Uh, contact your system administrator to, to enable that. So I did some, some digging around at the back end and found a tab in the settings uh, where uh, device backups were turned off by default. Um, and that's super frustrating. That's the reason I have these applications like Nextcloud or FileCloud is so that my phone will back up automatically, uh, not so that I've got to jump through a bunch of hoops in order to get these things to work. Two last things that I want to touch on. One, uh, of course, we do everything through Docker on this channel, and currently their Docker image is three months behind. Uh, there are apparently updates that I can't get because I'm using a Docker image. Now, it's entirely possible that because of the coronavirus and everything going on right now, that their team has put a halt on everything. But um, the problem that I have with that is I got into technology and development and those sorts of things because they're, they're the types of jobs that you can do from anywhere. As long as you've got an internet connection and something to type on, you can write code. So there's no excuse for their Docker images to be three months behind, leaving those of us who use Docker open to vulnerabilities and updates and things like that, that we should be able to get, again, especially when we're paying. Again, not very much, but we're paying for these licenses um, but we're not getting the updates that everybody else is getting if we're using Docker, and that's super frustrating. The last thing I want to touch on is a bit of a gray area for me, honestly, because uh, after I got set up, I got an email from a guy named Ash at FileCloud offering me uh, 20 bucks to write a review of their, uh, of their software. 
uh, at that point, I had already uh, put up the tutorial video and I explained that to him. I was like, I've already done this, uh, but I, I, I'm just like, this is where I am. And he's like, oh, well, in that case, since you do videos, uh, if you would do a video review of our software on your channel, I'll pay you $100 instead. Um, I told him, no, I wasn't interested in doing that uh, because I don't do reviews. Uh, this video is an exception of that, of course. I don't do product reviews or service reviews on this channel very often, um, and I'm not gonna take your money to do the review. I'm just not because it's going to skew uh, my perception. It's going to uh, make me <clears throat> want to give a good review uh, in order to get that money. And that's not how I like to work here. I like to give honest reviews. Uh, as, as, as every time I give a review, I want it to be an honest review of my interpretation of what's going on with the product or the service. Um, he did end up sending me a $25 uh, Amazon gift card that I ended up reinvesting into the channel to get some micro SD cards for some Raspberry Pis. Um, but I didn't take his money for the actual video review. Um, the only reason I bring this up is to make you be aware that there are possibly reviews out there that were paid for in order to uh, get their, uh, their internet traction up a little bit. Uh, so there's a chance that any review you find may have been paid for in order to get it online. And I think that that's a little bit sketchy. That's just something I wanted to bring up. Yes, I took his money, but it was for a service I already did um, that, that had nothing to do with what he was offering. Um, and I reinvested it into the channel. So um, I think that pretty much wraps up everything. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to charge for a service, but then to 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 restrict the user who just paid you for the service, uh, especially when you sign up for a trial license, they give you a standard license. So you get used to having access to all of these different features and functions and all of this access in the back end of the site. But as soon as you upload your community edition license, a lot of that goes away. And I think that's kind of a crap bait and switch thing that they're doing there. Um, so this is why I wanted to bring all of this up. Uh, I, I wanted people to be aware that it looks good on the surface, but there are several things that I take issue with regarding how FileCloud runs their business. Uh, so I just, I can't recommend uh, FileCloud to anybody moving forward. Uh, again, NextCloud is more tedious to set up, but I really believe in the long run, it's worth it. It's got a better community uh, support. Uh, it's got uh, more options for functionality. There's no restrictions on users. Um, I Overall, I just think NextCloud is a better product. So all that being said, thanks for sticking around. Uh, thanks for enjoying your time with me. Hopefully you're spending your time with me anyway. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Uh, so with all that being said, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.